Hey guys, it's Brandon from Electric Marketing, and today I'm going to show you how to do reporting in SEMrush, uh, whether that's with someone uh, you're already working with, or if it is uh, your own business, or if you want to get some information um, on a potential competitor. So you're going to navigate to your dashboard, and you're going to scroll down on the left here to My Reports. Click on that, and then you're going to see all reports in my templates. So these are all the reports I've ever made. Um, and you can see that there's like 58 of this specific one, and that's a template. So you can create templates so that in the case of you're going to be doing a lot of the same reporting, maybe you have a base template for all of your clients, you would then just create reports off of that template. So it looks something like this. When you click the create report here, this will pop up. And you can modify the domain here. So let's say we want to do Nike instead of Bonobos. We'll change it, and then it auto-populates for everything in the report. Then you can go through and add text here and provide commentary on whatever the results are showing. So obviously, Nike is ranking for a ton of keywords uh, in the top 10 search results that have a search volume of more than 300 a month. Um, this report template is set up for smaller businesses where this number could be anywhere from 5 to 100 max, um, not 37,000. So obviously you can change your reporting as you see fit. But if you want to create a template, all you have to do is once you've actually downloaded the report, go to All Reports, click on Settings, and you just say Create Template. And then once you create a template, you can change that name, create it, and it'll pop up right here. Then you have your template and you don't have to keep doing the same thing over and over again. But we're going to go over how to set up a report from just starting at blank. Um, you can use any of these and they provide a good starting point um, if you're confused on what to do. But I prefer to have personalized tailored reports for my clients or if it's your, for your business, you're going to have specific things that you want to focus on um, as opposed to others. Also, I should mention that this reporting will be better if you're able to sync in your Google Analytics um, and Google Search Console as well, which I'll get to in another video. And that will allow you to use more of these widgets on the side here, on the left side, as opposed to if you're just pulling the data um, not directly from the source. So obviously you're not going to have access to the Google Analytics data of someone you're not working with or working for or if it's not your own company. But in the case that you do, your reporting will be better because it's going to be real-time, accurate, straight from the source. So let's do uh, YouTube SEMrush template. Entitle your report. Report setup. Now you can start dragging and dropping what you're interested in. So you have your domain analytics. Um, that's holistic domain, anything from organic research to backlinks to advertising to the traffic that you're, that's being driven to the site. Then you have keyword analytics where you can do specific uh, reporting on keywords. You have a backlink audit where you're able to identify which domains are backlinking to a certain site. Position tracking seeing which keywords you're actually ranking for, and then also which positions those are in. You can also do a site audit for things like broken pages, uh, redirects, uh, also just general site time, like the time for the site to load. You also have some basic on-page SEO checkers. This is what I'm talking about when I say Google Analytics and Google My Business and Google Search Console. You're able to provide reporting on this if you do connect that. And then this is how I report on traffic to clients, where you pull in Google Analytics um, traffic and you're able to provide the source and the medium that it comes from. So the only way that this will show up is if you have a Google account connected. And you can just add it by clicking right there and signing in. Then you're able to choose your account, property and view, and you can filter by traffic channel, you can filter by segment, you choose the period, all of that, and you just click OK, and it'll show you 
the data in a tabulated format that's easy to digest and isn't super confusing. So while that loads, let's go through the domain analytics. You have your organic research. You can see here now it populates. You can see that uh, this particular website in the last 30 days has gone down 23% um, traffic as a whole. Now we don't report on that. We only report on Google um, on Google traffic, on organic traffic. So we filter that and select the segment organic search. And then we're only seeing the data from people who are coming to the website from organic search. So you, here you have organic search summary. You can choose the database date. Let's do current. And you just select OK. This just gives you very basic information. SEM rush rank of 78. How many keywords and the traffic cost. So Nike is driving $25 million worth of traffic to their site uh, per month. And that's based on how much it would have costed them to bid on those keywords in Google via AdWords. You can do keywords by country, which is pretty straightforward. Traffic, organic versus paid. So this is a good way to see how much traffic a competitor might be getting because you don't have access to their Google Analytics, but SEMrush does pull organic traffic and paid traffic. And we would filter this so that it's not all time because that's impossible to look at. You can do in the last six months and that'll give you like a range. When it's this big, 50 million on the, on the Y axis, it's hard to really decipher this graph, so I don't like to use it. But in the case of smaller businesses who have less search volume, um, it does help. Here you can have your top keywords. And most of them for Nike are branded because it's such a huge brand, their volume is very high on those branded keywords, but most of the time it won't be a branded keyword that is uh, your top keyword. Then you can have your keyword position distribution. And this shows you a graph of the number of keywords you're ranking for is on the Y axis and the X axis is the position. So on the first to third result, there's 153,000 keywords that Nike is ranking for. Then fourth to 10th, 120,000 and so on. So these first two are the first page, the second one's the second, sorry, the third one here is the second page and so on. So third page, fourth page, fifth page, and you go down the list. You can also pull top competitors based on keywords that you're ranking for. So Foot Locker, Finish Line, East Bay, Ibit, and Sneaker News are their top competitors. And you have a percentage here. You also have the number of keywords and uh, competitive keywords. So these are the keywords you're comp competing on, and these are the total number of keywords that these websites are ranking for. And obviously this stuff is very high level, but it can be important in identifying who you need to do a deeper dive on. You can also do branded search, branded versus non-branded. So Nike, anything with Nike, or Jordan is going to be branded because that's a brand of Nike's. Nike and Jordan, those are all branded. So you want to look at your branded versus non-branded traffic because a lot of organic growth is going to come through non-branded traffic. You can identify all of your positions in Google and what keywords for the top 100 results. I'm not going to pull it in here for Nike because it's going to be ridiculously long, but it'll show you every keyword you're ranking for, what position, what volume, and what percentage of traffic is being driven to your site from that particular keyword. You can also do new versus lost keywords. So you can see where you're improving, where you're declining, top competitors again, which of your pages are ranking the highest, and what's driving the most traffic, and some of your URL positions. Then you can get into backlinks. Um, really the only one I care about here, and um, maybe there should be more, but when you're working with smaller businesses, the new and lost backlinks, um, it's pretty straightforward, so that just shows you uh, new versus lost. Follow versus no follow is if a backlink is a follow backlink or a no follow backlink. No follow means you're not getting any of the website authority from the uh, the site that's linking to you. Follow means you're getting some website authority, so that'll help your domain rank. Then you have top countries, top anchors, but really for me, it's the top referring domains because uh, the number of no domains linking to you is more important than the total number of backlinks. 
So Hurley, Converse, who they actually own, so they have great internal linking between their different brand properties here. Um, these are their top referring domains. And what I really like to look at most is a total um, backlink list. It's called backlinks referring domains. And this will show you every domain that is backlinking to your website. And there you can see there's 113,000 domains backlinking to Nike. Uh, so if you want to have an unreal SEO score and online presence, go get 113,000 domains to backlink to. Here you can do some advertising research. Um, this is typically better for identifying competition. So you can see your top competitors, where you are in the competitive positioning map for those particular keywords, um, what sort of traffic you're driving from those keywords and how much it's costing, and what your positions are within those paid keywords. Uh, you can see your improved and declined key, uh, positions just like with organic keywords. And you can also see um, your URL uh, data as well as um, the competitors. These are pretty self-explanatory. Um, you can just skip through those. Traffic analytics will show you where your traffic is coming from. So in this case, we can drag this in here. And you can change this domain, and it won't change the other one. So if you want to include multiple websites within a report, you can do that. So here you can see for the month of April 2019, 50% was direct, 8% was referral. Search accounted for 36% of the traffic. Social was only 3%, but granted it was 520,000 people. Um, and paid AdWords was 5% at a little bit of above a million. So you can compare bounce rate based on your competitors. You can also compare bounce rate uh, depending on which traffic source they're coming from. So something we see a lot is organic search has a higher conversion rate. Uh, and that's something that we like to track. Here you can do general keyword research. And this is all pretty self-explanatory. You pull it in here. Um, for example, keyword research organic results. You can type in a keyword and it will show you what shows up for those first 20 positions in the organic results. Um, there's a bunch of other stuff here like the cost per click the trend and the keyword volume, all of that. You can also do phrase match, so you can find related keywords. Uh, this is pretty nice because you can identify um, keywords in a report. All you have to do is put in shoes, and then here you can see all of the phrase matches for that shoe, for shoes. So Payless Shoes, DSW, and so on. Let's delete that because it's 2 million long. Again, you have the backlink audit. Um, and you really just need to play around with this and set up a template that works for you based on which metrics are important. Um, I'll show you what I believe is important for our clients primarily. But this is coming from an SEO perspective where we don't really care about the other channels. I mean, we do, but it's not um, its not what we're responsible for. We are starting to take uh, ownership of some clients like email marketing, social media, and so we are starting to provide reporting on traffic as a whole. But in this case, we do have a focus on SEO. So I'm gonna use Airplant Man as an example. And this is my uh, client updates 3.0 report that I provide for all of my clients. I'll change it depending on um, what's going on. But here you can see some of the results. So I like to show the keyword position distribution graph because we tell all of our clients we want it to be increasing in total volume but also moving to the left. So here you can see it's doing exactly that. In February when we started, you can see there was three in the top three, one in the top four to 10, 17 in the top 11 to 20, and six in the top 21 to 30. Now you can see there's four in the top one to three, 14 in the top four to 10, 57, and then 51. So you can see this graph is definitely increasing and it's definitely moving to the left. 
And this just shows visually without looking at like a bunch of numbers that stuff is happening and it is working. Then here, all I'm really looking for is this number right here. I do dive into this and see what the keywords actually are to make sure that they're high value keywords that we're starting to rank for. But in terms of the holistically reporting, we see in February, we had 25 keywords in the top three pages. Now we're at 123. So that's a ridiculous increase. And then you can break it down by going into here and seeing some of the new keywords that we've captured. So we weren't ranking for airplanes at all when we first started in February. And now you see we're almost about to get onto the second page for that. And that's a keyword that has over 60,000 searches a month. If we get that onto the first page in the next couple of months with more content creation and optimization of the site and even some backlink building, that is going to be unbelievably like a huge game changer for this company. That'll more than 10x their current traffic just because of that one keyword. But then you have more specific keywords like air plant care right here. And this is where we're now in the ninth position. And you can see that we actually put together an air plant care guide for this client. And that is what is exact, that is what is driving that traffic. So you can see the art of air plant care and it is a ridiculously long and super informative piece of content that is directly responsible for this increase in keyword ranking. So you can go through all that. And then here I provide uh, holistic traffic reporting based on uh, Google Analytics data. So you just go in here and you change out the account. So it would be Airplant Man. And we're doing year over year, uh, last 30 days. And you can see there's a 110% increase in traffic year over year for them. And so those are, that's like the basic report. And then I'll go into some more stuff. We always have the backlinks up here just to have a general sense. Um, but it really depends on client to client. And I really suggest playing around with this a lot and seeing which is most helpful for you and most easily digested. And that's really what's going to provide you the most value long term. And then when you're done, you can just generate the report. You can email it to people. You can schedule it so that every week on Monday it, it goes to your inbox. Or maybe every month on Monday or you want it daily. I don't know why you would want it daily because SEO is more long term. But you can also have a table of contents as well. Then you just generate that and it'll pop out a PDF report. Which you can then save, use it internally send it to a client if like you're an agency or a consultant, uh, whatever it may be. But that's basically uh, the main functions of SC SEMrush reporting. And it's super helpful, completely invaluable when it comes to competitor research, it provides you unparalleled data um, and information for you to act on. And really, SEO is not reinventing the wheel. It's doing what is already on the first page, but doing it better. So that's it. If you have any questions, as always, uh, feel free to reach out in the comments or uh, email me. But that's about it. Thanks for watching.